Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and praise him. We can't worry about who's not here or who's come. We, we all know what we came to do. We came into the house of the Lord this morning to give him honor and praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let's thank him on the day. Let's thank him. We've seen another day. I mean, there's so many are leaving here at a fast pace. And we never know when our time is going to come. But we got to be prepared and ready for that time, even though we don't know. But praise be to God. Let's keep everyone that's in prayer. Just keep them that God, it be God's perfect will that it be done. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to come into the house of God one more time. I was like David. They say, let us come into the house of the Lord. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, that we know you is already here. Lord, you let your power and your spirit move through this place, Lord. Covers those that's here. Covers those that's on the way, Lord. Cover them that's in the hospital, Lord. Cover everybody, Lord. You know what they need. And, Lord, we ask you to bless whosoever will. Let them come ministry, Lord. Keep letting them move forward, Lord. Keep our leaders in prayer, Bishop and Senior Pastor Brown, that they will continue to decrease while you increase in them, Lord. Lord, we just want you to just bless everyone that's in here today, Lord. You know their needs, Lord. You just continue to do what you need to do, Lord. And we're going to do all the glory and praise. We're going to keep lifting you up like we know how to. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The young adults, they can go ahead and be dismissed. Okay, did you turn it in? Brother Keyshawn, you give Brother Kenny his book. He, uh, he, I mean, Keyshawn, I, did you turn yours in? And, uh, and get uh, Miss Turner's too. Bring hers to uh, Brother Kenny. I just mark it off, they turned theirs in. It should be in alphabetical order, amen. How everybody doing this morning? Well, Bray, amen. I know everybody. I mean, I've probably been full speed since Thursday. It's been a long week, but I thank God that I was able to make it into the house of the Lord this morning to get restored and revived and refreshed to move on in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be coming out. Uh, this is the first lesson. In the name of the first lesson, be faith and doubt. We'll be coming out of Genesis 19. Put the glasses on. By the end of the lesson, this ain't for the change. By the end of the lesson, we will explore the reason the angels spurred Lot and his family from destruction of Sodom. Identify with lot fear of impending disasters and celebrate God's deliverance from seemingly hopeless situations. Could I get somebody to read in the focus, please?
Amen. That should be one of the first things we do is thank God for allowing us to see another day because every day is not accounted for. The Bible says every, every man should die. Got a point in time to die. But we got to thank him for what we have. I mean, God is faithful, and a lot of times in this story uh, about Lot, you have to read a couple of chapters before to see, to get the understanding, but where it started at, see, when God first told Abraham to leave. See, sometimes God will put us in a place and he'll tell us to leave. But see, we'll bring somebody else that we ain't supposed to bring, see? Sometimes God won't do a work in you, but we thinking about somebody else. It may be a family member, it may be a friend, it may be somebody, but they are not supposed to come, but because we bring them and God is faithful in what we do, he going to accept that. And so when he brought a lot along, then it came to a point where the Lord came and told Abraham about the promise of the child. Now, before he left, he already heard the cries of Solomon, Solomon and Gomorrah. So by Lot being there, Abraham was able to, to work it down from 100 to 10. And it won't 10 righteous people left in the place. And so when we get to the uh, beginning of the story, see, it's good to have somebody praying over your life and in a sin. I thank God for our leaders. They pray and intercede over our life. We pray and intercede for each other. It's not just not what about what we can do, but we got to intercede for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And it gets to a point, sometimes we can be in a place and reading that story and getting understanding. It seemed like Lot then was the only one that was trying to do right. But see, sometimes when you get in a place where everybody's doing wrong, either they're going to have to do right or you're going to end up doing wrong. Have you ever been in a place where you've been trapped in the middle? You don't know really which way to go. You come to that road and you want to know, man, I want to do right, but wrong always pulling on me. So we got to learn to just learn how to just depend and thank God for what he's doing in our life and where he's taking us because a lot of times we make bad choices and bad decisions even though we are saved. I mean, they don't, we don't get a bad because we're born again believers because we still got to go through trial and tribulation just like the next person get up. Only difference is we say and they not say. So they got to go through things too. So the Bible say he, he blessed the just as well as the unjust. So we don't, don't think everything going to lean our way. Hey Amen. That's okay. We, I, we, we, I mean, it's all good. Amen. Amen. But uh, we're going to start. Can I get a reader? Uh, verse 1, then 15 through 17. Amen. It's saying the first, and there came two angels of, to Solomon, 
sometimes we be at a place and we reverence the people of God. A lot seen to men. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing. It's evident that that's who they are. You don't have to ask no question. You know, sometimes people say, well, I know it was something about you that you was different. So sometimes you ain't got to go around and broadcast who you are. They'll be able to recognize who you are if you're doing right. Then they'll recognize you if you're doing wrong. Hey, Amen. The Bible says they, we would know them by the fruit that they bear. So Lot was in a place that he knew he didn't have no business being there. But he was there because that's what he chose. And that's how we are sometimes. We be in a place that we ain't got no business being. But while we there, we got to make the best of it. And praying that God keep his hand upon us. Amen. I know I have been in some situations where I know I ain't had no business in there. Especially when I was doing drugs. And I always had a fear that on my ride home, if the Lord came, I was not going to make it in. That was my biggest fear. But it didn't stop me from doing drugs right then, but I always had that fear. Lord, if you come now, I won't be able to make it. But I thank be to God that God kept his hand over me and allowed me to come in. So we, Lot recognized the two men, the two angels, the Bible said angels, and we got to recognize, because the Bible says sometimes you can entertain angels and be unaware. But it's something about them that you will know. Spirit connecting spirit. You know, if you're around somebody that's evil and you good, y'all spirit not going to connect. It's it going to be something stopping y'all from coming together. Good and evil can't divide in the same house. But see, between uh, verse 1 and 14, it tells about, how Lot brought them in and how that night all the men want to get to them angels, the men of God. See, it was so much evil that whatever they done, they thought was right. See, they done, they done been turned over to a reprobated mind that what they doing was okay. But sometimes when God got a plan for your life, no matter what situation or no matter where you may be in, he'll cover you and send somebody to pull you out. And that was Jesus Christ that pulled all of us out when we was living in sin. Amen. Can y'all agree to that? Amen. That we was lost and didn't have a way out. But he sent his son to save him just like he sent the angels to save Lot. But sometimes we get in a place and we do things so long and we get comfortable with it. We don't want to change. We want to stay doing the same thing. That's why I can still say about myself, when I was doing drugs, I felt comfortable doing drugs. I knew it was wrong, but I kept doing it. Week after week, week after week, I might quit six months, I might quit two years, but some kind of way I kept going back to it. But praise be to God that God was faithful that he had delivered me for 11 years now. Amen. So I know that there's a God that works. And he's working in all of us. Amen. Okay. And it's saying, sometime when we in that place, see, since it wasn't 10 people, God's plan still had to go on. See, if it had been 10, the place never would have got destroyed. Sometime when evil and I knew, I'm going to say, I, that's why I like talking about myself. I was in this crack house. The next week I didn't go. That's the week it got raided. See, he brought me out. Even though I wasn't delivered at that time, but I just didn't go to that crack house. And it got raided. The doors got kicked in. Everybody went to jail. So he spurred me. See, he had a plan for me, which I didn't know at the time. So that's what we got to know. We got to realize when it's God working and when it's not us working. So I know it was God that kept me home that weekend. I thank God. But even though I ended up still going to jail too, but that was another situation. So he told them, he said, in the morning rise, 
So Lot went around and told his brother, his son-in-laws and everybody, look, we got to go. When we are true believers, and that's why the Bible says, know them that labor among you. If some of your brothers and sisters come around, you say, look, we need to go. It's something finna jump off. You shouldn't question too much if they're not one of the people that every time you turn around, they're trying to keep something going on. You should be able to recognize your spirit should cohence with their spirit. Like, man, you're right. Something ain't right. We need to get out. So what they was doing, he was preparing them to leave. But sometimes when we get in that situation or place, we don't want to leave. We're comfortable. Everything going good. I ain't got to worry about this. I ain't got to worry about that. But see, we don't know the true plan, what God has for us. And God might want to move us somewhere else. We don't know the destruction. Because see, if I'd have been disobedient and went to that crack house, and we, I would have went to jail too. Or I could have lost my life in the midst of anything. I don't, I don't know. But I thank be to God that he was faithful enough and he believed and took Abraham's word and prayers that he prayed for his nephew to bring him out. See, we got to intercede for people sometimes. It's not all about us. We got to have a heart of compassion for our brothers and sisters and even the unsaved that they get saved too. Amen. So they was lining them up, lot them, wife and daughters, them, the son-in-laws, them. They didn't want to go. All right. What's the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Okay, I led you there. <laughs> if you want to drink, that's up to you. God gave us his son. If you don't want to accept him, that's on you. God has sent somebody in to rescue you and bring you out. You don't want to go. That's on you. Anybody got in the comments? Okay, number 16. They say, why... Lot them linger, the men lay hands upon his hands. Sometimes have you ever been a place, it felt like somebody had your hand and was leading you out. That was God. That was God bringing you out of them places. That you know you ain't had no business. You was going down a road and all of a sudden something come up, you turned and went another way, but if you kept going, that was a tragic wreck down the road that God saved us. We got to look at this as a bigger picture. We got to look at it as like our life is on the line. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches us how to live and thankful for what God has done in their life, letting us know God can do it in our life. So the angels then was leading them out. And it's been times. I don't know. Today, just a day, I guess I'm on myself. It was many days the angels were trying to leave me out the crack house, but all we kept going back. I knew I ain't had no business in there. I said, Lord, if I can get out of here tonight, I'm going to do right. A couple weeks go by, I'm going rat back. Lord, I ain't going to blow my check this week. Lord, I got a lot of overtime in. Lord, I need to go home. But some kind of way, and I got to that car, the angel was trying to turn to the right, but I turned to the left. Amen. And see, that's what a lot of them were doing. A lot of them didn't want to leave because they was comfortable at what they was doing. Anybody ever been in a place where you were comfortable and you don't want to move? I know I ain't the only one, but I raise my hand. You ain't got to raise your hand, but praise be to God. Just open up and let them know that sometimes we got to move out of where we at. Amen. We can't stay the same once we get God in us. Amen. He got a bigger plan for us. And he do all he can, but see, sometimes we get in ourselves and we don't want the hand of God to be upon us. We want to do it our way. Our way or the highway. Anybody ever say that? Amen. You going to do it my way or the highway. But see, God is persistent no matter what and no matter how long. Look how many years we resisted him till he came into our lives. Amen. Yes. But 
But see, God, see, God knew the plan. No matter what, no matter how it looked, no matter how the outcome, see, he knew the ending before the beginning. He knew that when Abraham, he sent Abraham away, he wasn't supposed to take Lot. See, sometimes we bring people along that we ain't supposed to take. So now we got to intercede for them because they ain't doing right. And see, he gave Lot first choice where he wanted to go. So all because all everything looked green and everything was jumping off down there, the, the music bumping and everything down there, they just living like they want to. That's where Lot wanted to go. So Abraham let him go. So sometimes we set ourselves up for a fault because we think the grass is sometimes greener on the other side. That's just like when we walk in Christ. Sometimes we want to go back into Egypt when God had brought us out. You see, God already knew the plan. See, that's what is getting in our spirit. We got to know when it's God moving. And like I say, the Bible says, the fresher and fresher of a righteous man, prayer of very much. Somebody prayed for us until we got saved. Amen. So he honored their prayers. And he honored us. Sometimes we had to get to where we ain't got no way. So I, I knew when I was in jail with a million dollar bond, I knew I wasn't going to make bail. So I said, Lord, while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and get myself together. I don't want to go back the way I came in. And see, God with his good self, he'll honor what you say. And sometimes we get in that comfortable place. We don't want to move. We think that everything is okay. I'm sitting up in the house. Only thing they got in the freezer a couple of bottles of water and stuff. And I got a house. Everything is clean. Freezer full of food. I done been there two or three days. I ain't got so. I mean, I felt comfortable there. Knowing that ain't where I need to be. Hand change the clothes in the car. So I go out and get my clothes, change clothes. I didn't want to look like where I was at. But I accepted where I was at. Amen. We got to look at it. How God moves in our lives. And even though a lot of them hesitated, they weren't going to give up in them. See, we can't give up on our cousin and family because they ain't come in yet. Look how we resisted before we came in. Look how our heart beat it when it was pulling strong in the church and we walked out. We didn't receive him at that time. We got to hold on. We got to continue to pray just like they prayed for us, that they get it right. Because if they didn't, see, sometimes they tell them to move. You can send the kids on down to the class if you want to take them down there. Sometimes we have to, when things ain't going right, you know God is working. God will do something where you got to move. Amen. Anybody ever been in that place where God made you move when you didn't want to move? Amen. If you're a born-again believer, something in your life didn't have what God had to make you move. And so, but when we get comfortable in our environment and what we're doing, it draws us to stay right where we at. You got some people, when they get saved, only thing they want to do is just come to church. That's all. They don't want to do nothing else in there. So that's what, that's what they do. Then you got some come in and want to do a little bit more. Then you got some come in and want to do a little bit more. What the Bible say? Much, much is required. Much is given. Much is required. So a lot of us in here, a lot is required for us because we want to do more in God. God is grabbing our hand. Can I get in the comments? Anybody ever been in a place where God had to pull you out? Amen. Anybody want to say something about it? Amen. Anybody got a comment?
I understand and the understanding that I got up when Lot first went there, Lot honored God. But see, sometimes you can get in a situation or in a place where it pulls you away from what you normally start doing. See, Lot had been there for some years. Now he didn't want to leave. Him or his family because they got comfortable. Even though there was a lot of sin going around them, but they still thought it was okay to live there. And see, you know, in, in, in prayer, to me, it's not holding nobody. I can say a quick prayer for somebody and keep going. That's God moving on behalf. Me trying to pull them on, I can't do it. Because, amen. You got, you got something to say? You know, a lot of times when we first all got saved, we was on fire for the Lord. But then as years went on, we got comfortable. Now we think we're strong enough to handle some adversities in our lives. So we'll do things that we normally shouldn't do since we've been saved. We ain't talking about the unsaved. We're talking about doing things since you've been saved. Saying stuff that we ain't got no bit of saying since we've been saved. Going places. Since we've been saved, we ain't got no business going. We get comfortable with it. Like you, Pastor Preet, you got to renew your mind. It's a transformation. Like y'all were saying, you got to renew it. And see, we don't, none of us know all the work that God has for us. Only thing we just got to be do is be available and a willing vessel. When the call come, go. Amen. So, the Lord, the Lord hung in there with a lot just like he hung in there for us because some of us were stubborn before we come in. Some got it early, some got it late. Some ain't going to get it. But they hung in there. Can I get a, write, a reader for uh, 18 to 22? Amen. And see, sometimes God got a place for us to go. See, when I was getting ready to get out of prison, God was leading me for here for Salisbury, but I wanted to go to Charlotte, okay? I didn't want to come to this little old place, Salisbury, all right? Because I feel like what I was doing and what I'm trying to do, I can still do it down there. 
But see, God got a place for it. And see, he was trying to send Lot them up in the mountain, but they wanted to go where people still was. Sometimes God want to isolate you from where you at. That way he can work on you. And I thank God that he sent me and I obeyed and stayed in Salisbury. There's no way I can sit here and say eight years from June 11, 2011, that I would still be safe if I was in Charlotte. I don't know if I would still have been alive, but that's where I want to go because I was familiar with that area. And that's what I want to do. And see, that's what God be want to do in our life. He want to move us, but we still want to go and be around the same thing what we was doing that what he's trying to take us out of. And I thank God that I did be obedient and came on to Salisbury. Amen. It ain't as bad as I thought it was. I mean, it ain't the place where I want to be, but it's where God wanted me to be. So amen. I just thank him that that worked out. And see, sometimes I put myself in lot place. God had to do the same thing for me that he did for lot. He wanted to move me. I didn't want to go. I still want to do the same thing. I knew if I went back to Charlotte, I can say it now. If I went back to Charlotte, if I start going back to the old places, then I start back doing the old things. So you can't put new wine in old in an old wine skin. It ain't gonna help. You can't you can't transfer and stay holy and say when you go back into that same mess that you was in, because something on the inside that old man ain't dead. See, he dead for a minute, and it'll draw him right back. I knew if I done went in a couple of houses, I'm, I'm, I'm just being real. You gotta be real. Some women have been up in there, and I'd have had a few dollars in my pocket. I would have tried to get jiggy one more time. I'm just trying to tell you. Be real. Be real, real. If I went back to Charlotte, I knew something was going to jump off because if it didn't move fast enough, I was going to try to make it move myself. And see, that's what God is trying to do, get us in a place where he can work on us instead of us trying to work on ourselves. And he's sending people around us to bring us out, but we'll talk them down. That's why I thank God for whosoever will let them come ministries. Open arm ministry where you can come in and feel love and don't look down. You know, if I was in a lot of churches and I'm an ex-felon and uh, somebody did drugs and I'm robbed, you think they're going to let me put the mic in my hand? Praise be to God. But look at what God done, see? They ain't looking at what I done. They're looking at what's happening now. And see, like I was saying earlier, Lot won't supposed to come from the beginning. Sometimes we bring people on. Yes, man. Sometimes we bring people on that ain't supposed to come, but God are on his word. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Yeah. 
I thought about that too, but the Bible say Abraham prays. I ain't got to worry about if he didn't pray. See, we, we knew, but we knew people prayed for us. The lifestyle that we lived, our parents prayed for us. We all be praying for other people, but Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't just intercede just for Lot. He started at 100 and worked all the way down to 10. So he, he, he said there he prayed and prayed for the whole city. Even though his nephew was down there, he wanted the city to not be destroyed. And so he kept going. And so when it won't 10, that's when the angels of the Lord went down there. See, the angel of the Lord came to us personally and said, look, we need come, you need to come on out this mess. You done did it long enough. You done smoked enough drugs. You done committed enough fornication. You done did this. You done did it. Come on out of there now. Let's go. Let's go. People praying for you. Get on out of there where you can live and not die. Sometimes we be in a situation that we feel comfortable. We don't want to go nowhere. All that tugging, all that praying, Abraham Lee Lot still didn't willingly want to go. He held on. They had to grab him by his hand and lead him out. And see, we were like that. God had to grab us by our hand and lead us out of that mess that we was in. Because we was comfortable. Yes, ma'am. I see. Oh, oh, okay. Well, amen. And I thank God. I put myself in this same scripture. How God did Lot. He'll do the same for us. No matter what mess you in. The lesson say he is faithful. He was faithful yesterday. He was faithful when he served Lot them. He is faithful now. And he's going to be faithful forevermore. No matter what situation we in. A lot of times we put our own situation in there. People praying for us. I had people, plenty of people praying for me. But I still felt like I had to do my own until I got transferred into the renewing of my mind to let God work in my life instead of me trying to do it. I know we're running out of time, but it got to a point where the angels told them, don't look back. See, sometimes we just got to say, we got to look at the homeboys and the hometown one more last time. <laughs> See, you don't ever know. That might be your last time you look. Amen. Because when she looked back, the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. See, God will give us all the instructions we need to do. But we won't follow all them. That's just like making a cake. The Bible, the box tells you, you put three eggs in there, but you put two. So it don't feel out the way it should because that one egg would have made that bigger difference. And see, sometimes when he brings us around them homeboys or homegirls, we just got to move on. We can't look back. We got to send our prayers up and let God continue to move in their life as well as ours. Can we please stand to our feet since the music has come on? Amen, amen. I'm going to ask Deacon Bush, would he come up and lead us out in prayer? Amen. I pray, God, that somebody got something out of this, that God is moving us to a new place. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks. <clears throat> Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just bless your name and give you glory, God. And give you honor because you're worthy, God, for who you are. You are holy. 
and you are righteous, God. And we thank you, God, for the things that you have done in our lives over the years and continue to do day by day, hour by hour, God. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for speaking to your people, for loving us enough to send your word through your manservant, God. We bless your name, God. Strengthen us that we receive your word and be doers and not hearers only. Now, God, replenish, restore, replace your servant, God. Return all the virtue that he has poured out in the name of Jesus, God. And we bless you, God. We thank you for your presence right now and in the next service, God. We will give you glory. We will honor you. We will worship you, God, for you are worthy. And we bless your name right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I got a, a little note here. It says, immediately following the morning glory, front line, please meet in front of Bishop's office, please. All front line, please meet in front of Bishop's office immediately. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.